Short-term liquidity ratios, like the current ratio or the quick ratio, tell you about a company's ability to pay its debts that come due in the next 12 months. But what about beyond the next 12 months? For that, we're going to look at long-term solvency ratios. So long-term solvency ratios can really be put into two categories. We've got debt ratios, and then we've got coverage ratios. Debt ratios are telling you how leveraged is this company. Does this company have a ton of debt relative to its assets, relative to the capital that was put up to finance the company? And there's multiple different ways to measure debt uh, and leverage for a company. For example, long-term debt to assets ratio is telling you the percentage of the company's assets that are being financed by long-term debt. I'm going to show you this in, in a minute with Home Depot and Lowe's with their actual long-term debt to assets ratio. But there's other ways of measuring leverage, uh, liabilities to assets. You just take the total liabilities divided by total assets. Why is that maybe not as good as long-term debt to assets? Well, total liabilities includes a lot of different things like unearned revenue. It, do you really think of unearned revenue as leverage? Most people wouldn't. Okay. So we got long-term debt to tangible assets. If you want to exclude from assets, things like goodwill. Uh, but there, there's a lot of different debt ratios. And actually, let me show you a, a few more that I've got in my guide here. So one of the most common ones that you're going to see is actually the debt to equity ratio. Okay, so this this one right here, you're very likely to see that in practice. The company's total liabilities divided by total stock worth equity. Let me show you how that would play out. So let's say we've got assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So we've got $10 of assets, and then we have $9 of liabilities, and then we have $1 of equity. So there's $10 of assets, and they're basically 90% financed by liabilities. So let's look at how this would play out with the debt to equity ratio. So we have total liabilities divided by total equity. So we have nine divided by one. So the debt to equity ratio for this company would be nine. Okay. Now the, the more leveraged the company becomes, the higher this debt to equity ratio is going to be. Now, some co when, when companies borrow money, so there'll be what are called loan covenants. Okay. So loan covenants. And so the lender will say, listen, uh, you know, we assessed, you know, your current, uh, you know, debt status, you owe a certain amount of money. And basically, we're going to put these covenants in place, these agreements that restrict you from taking on a certain amount of debt. So let's say that your debt to equity ratio when you borrow uh, money is, is currently at five. And it, and it might say in the covenant, okay, well, if your debt to equity ratio goes higher than seven, at any point, if it exceeds seven, we can call our loan due immediately. So it's basically these covenants are ways for the lenders to restrict you from becoming too highly leveraged. So that's one place that you would see these debt ratios. So debt to equity ratio, debt to capital, basically measurements that are used in, in loan covenants. And, but you as an investor, if you're thinking about investing in a company, you're thinking about, well, how highly leveraged is this company? So you can think about the debt to equity ratio, equity multiplier. Th these are different ways of measuring the leverage. So if, if we take the equity multiplier, Multiplier, for example, and we got assets divided by equity. So in this case, in this case, we would have 10 divided by one. So it'd be an equity multiplier of uh, 10. And so basically, the higher this equity multiplier is, uh, the, the more leveraged that company is. Okay, so now, so I've talked about debt ratios, and I've showed you there's a bunch of different ways to, to calculate them. Coverage ratios, so coverage ratios have to do with basically let me back up so just because a company has a ton of debt and they have a lot of leverage doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to make the interest payments and repay the principal of the debt right what if the company is extremely profitable okay and that's what the coverage ratios are getting into so debt ratio shows are tell this is trying to tell you how highly leveraged is this company is this company have a massive amount of debt? Are their assets really being financed by a lot of debt rather than equity? But the coverage ratio is getting into, okay, yeah, maybe they have a ton of debt, but how how well positioned are they to be able to, to pay the interest on the debt? And ultimately, in the long run, when they have to repay the principal. So the coverage interest coverage ratio, for example, we're looking at earnings before interest and taxes, so EBIT, as a multiple of the company's interest expense. So let's say that the company has, let's say, uh, $50. They have $50 of interest expense. So $50 of interest expense. And they have $400 of earnings before interest and taxes.
So this would be an interest coverage uh, ratio that would be eight, would be the multiple. So it's basically saying, look, they could pay their current interest expense eight times with their earnings before interest and taxes. So the higher this number is, if it's if it goes higher than eight, if it goes up to nine, it goes 10, 12, whatever, the better position this company is to basically use this profit to be able to pay the interest. In other words, to make this clear, just because you have a lot of debt doesn't mean you're going to default on the debt and not be able to make the interest payments. If you have a lot of profit relative to the interest that you have, then even though you have a lot of debt, you might, you could uh, you could pay the interest. Now, here's the thing though: what if something bad happens, and you you know you had earning uh, you had you had profits for years, but then you know there's a recession or something like that, and your profit gets wiped out. And now you're in a position where you don't have any profits to, to pay the interest. And you say, well, you know, we got cash on the balance sheet or something like that, that we can pay the interest, even though we're not profitable. So just because they have a good interest coverage ratio doesn't mean, you know, there could there could be a downturn in the economy. Something could happen to the company. Uh, there's some kind of problem. And now they're in a bad situation. So now you'll also hear sometimes a fixed charge coverage ratio so that's taking into consideration also lease payments as well because remember the company doesn't just have to pay interest uh, to the to their lenders they also might have, it's very common for a company to have a lot of leases and so those lease payments need to be uh, covered as well and also you need to talk about debt repayments that's repaying the principal not just covering the interest on the debt but repaying the principal so you could have a fixed charge coverage ratio and again all these ratios can also be used in loan covenants when the banks are deciding whether to lend uh, to a company or not. And they put these covenants in place to make sure the company doesn't over borrow and, and take on too much risk. Because remember, th these debt ratios are really when we're measuring leverage, you say, well, why do we care about leverage? Well, leverage leads to risk. Okay, leverage leads to risk because the more the more heavily de indebted this company is, the more interest it's going to have to pay. And remember, interest has to be paid whether the company is profitable or unprofitable, whether times are good or times are bad. So if there's a recession and you're like, oh, we're not making a lot of money, you still have to make those interest payments. You still have to make the lease payments and so forth. Now, cash flow to CapEx this doesn't really fall into, you know, this is more you could think, I guess, of as, as a coverage ratio, but this isn't talking about covering interest payments or lease payments or anything like that. But this is this is an important ratio in, in its own right. What we're doing here is if we think about like a retailer like Walmart. So let's think about Walmart. Walmart needs to be spent. They need to be incurring capital expenditures every period. Why? Well, even if they're not opening new stores, if they're just like, well, we're just going to stick with our existing stores, you still want to keep those stores clean and updated, right? You don't want people walking into dirty stores and stuff. So there's a certain amount of capital expenditures that Walmart needs to cover or, or to incur every year to make sure the stores don't look dingy. And so we can look at operating cash flow as a multiple of capital expenditures to see, are they generating enough cash flow to be able to cover those capital expenditures. And the higher the multiple is, okay, if, it, if it's just one, for example, then it's like they just have just enough operating cash flow to cap, uh, cover their CapEx. But if it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the higher that uh, cash flow to CapEx is, the better position uh, Walmart is gonna be able to make those necessary capital expenditures. So let me, uh, let's go and take a look at some actual numbers uh, for Home Depot and Lowe's. So I've got here, uh, I just calculated a few of the long-term solvency ratios. You see I've got, uh, like, for example, long-term debt to assets. Obviously, that would be a, a debt ratio. So when we look at this, we see that, and, and this these, these three are for Home Depot for 2017, 2018, and then this is 2019, and then these three are for Lowe's. Okay, so we got Lowe's over here, and we got Home Depot over here. We see that 56% of Home Depot's assets are being financed by long-term debt in 2019, okay? Now, we see that's been pretty stable over time for Home Depot. Now, is that a lot of is that a lot of long-term debt or not? Well, it depends, right? It depends, and we'll compare it to their competitor, Lowe's, and we see that they are more highly leveraged. And if we just look at long-term debt, this isn't looking at like short-term debt, right? So that's, that's important too. But in this particular ratio, we're just looking at long-term debt, and we see that Home Depot, a much higher percentage of their assets are being financed on long-term debt 
than the assets of, of, of Lowe's. And so there's more risk, right? There's more risk. If things aren't going well, uh, you're going to have to pay interest on that long-term debt, whether Home Depot makes money or loses money. So how well positioned are they to, to, to cover their interest? So when we look at the interest coverage ratio, we see that 13 times, and again, this is the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, divided by interest expense. That's what the interest coverage ratio is. So this is a multiple of 13 for Home Depot. So provided they keep making money, they're generating plenty of profit to be able to cover their interest expense. Now, uh, Lowe's is doing pretty well to 8.8, .8, right? Uh, but obviously Home Depot is better positioned. So even though Home Depot has a higher percentage of their assets that are financed by long-term debt than co compared to Lowe's, Home Depot is generating a lot more profit relative to the interest expense it's incurring than low. So it's in a good position to, to be able to pay the interest. Now, when we look at the operating cash flow as a multiple of capital expenditures, which we talked about, remember I said with Walmart and keeping the stores clean and so forth, well, Home Depot and Lowe's are retailers. They need to keep their stores clean as well. And so when we look at, we've got five times the amount of operating cash flow relative to capital expenditures for Home Depot. Now, for Lowe's, it was smaller, uh, but and it actually declined. So you'd want to think about that and say, okay, well, what's what's happening there? Uh, Home Depot had come down as well, right? It had also declined. So that's it's never good, right? When you want to say like, well, you know, we're having less and less operating cash flow relative to our capital expenditures, but still a multiple of five. Uh, it seems like they're not going to have any trouble generating enough operating cash flow to either roll out new stores or keep their existing stores updated.